Yo, 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 what up, what up, what up? This is Toby with Online Security, and we are going to jump back into our Cert Master Last Word Security Plus 701. Here we're going to be practicing around with some social engineering tools called SET. There's no better way to learn than to jump right into it, so let's get it. If you're not familiar with social engineering, it's a technique, and, and I'm going to explain this as I'm logging in. Social engineering is a technique that we use to persuade people to do things for us. We're trying to persuade them to do something for us or to take some type of action or to give us some type of information, right? Social engineering comes in all shapes and form. We're going to learn about a few of them now. All right, so let's go ahead and start up the set toolkit. This is what we're going to be using. You just type set toolkit, make sure you spell it out correctly, and then it's going to start up. All right, we have different options that we can use. Social engineering attacks, pen testing attacks, third party modules, a bunch of different actions. We're gonna use social engineering attacks. All right, these are the different types of social engineering attacks that we have here. Now, all of these instructions, they're gonna take you through all of the social engineering attacks one by one, so you can see the different options. I'm not gonna go through all of them, but I will go through the first few. All right, so after we select, let's go ahead and take a look at well, first of all, let's answer this question. Which of the following attack types is not supported? We see spear phishing. We don't. Well, we see wireless access point. We see PowerShell attack vectors. We see our uh, our Duno based attacks, but we don't see SQL injection, right? SQL injection is not a set toolkit type of thing. All right, let's take a look at spear phishing. To enter into any of these, it's pretty straightforward. You hit one of the numbers. If we want to go back, we hit 99. So we're going to type one for spear phishing. You see the different options that we have to do a spear phishing attack. We can do a mass email attack. We can create a file format payload or use a social engineering template, right? So the instructions want us to step back 99 and go and look at the next attack, right? We're going to look at website attack vectors. Check this out. These are the different options that you have to deploy a website attack vector. Java applets, I mean, applets, Metasploit, Credential Harvester, which is one of my favorite tab nabbing, web jacking, multi attack, HTA. 99 i'll go through one more i'm actually going to go through the last one no no i'll go i'll go through three with you three check it out these are the different options that we have to execute three file format exploits standard metasploit executables 99 go back you're just going to do this throughout all of them to take a look at all of their options i'm going to skip that and get right into this attack so to get right into this attack, we should be here. We should be at the main menu. First thing we're going to do is create a payload listener. We will make sense out of all of this as we go forward. So we set, select four to create the payload listener. Then we're going to select two to, to select which payload we want. The payload is what we're going to use to establish a connection with our victim. If this is us over here, we want our victims to reach back out to us to establish some type of connection so we can take control of their system, right? That's one of the objectives. So we already selected four, let's select two to pick the payload we want. We're gonna enter our IP address of 10.1.16.66. We're gonna select the port of 443. We'll explain that once we get there. Now this is gonna create the payload, right? This is gonna create the payload, while that is creating the payload, I'm gonna move this over. So what we're trying to do, where the attackers right now, we're going to create an email. All right, we're going to create this email and we're going to send the email to our victim. Hopefully the, the victim opens the email and clicks on the link. There's going to be a bad link in this email. Hopefully they click on it. If they do, it's going to establish a session with us using port 443, their computer. All right, it's going to establish a session with us. All right, so now we're going to select yes on this option that we have here. All right, we're going to select yes or just hit Y. All right, now this is going to launch another program called MSF Console, which we will use to accept that connection, right? Remember, we said we want the victims to connect to us. We're going to use MSF Console to accept that connection. All right, now that's good. We're going to go ahead and get our points, score that. We're gonna leave this terminal open, all right? I'm gonna open up a new tab. I'm gonna get file and then new tab, all right? Now from here, we're gonna CD to where, we're gonna change directories to where our payload is. You can see the payload is right here. It's called payload.exe. However, when we email this out, right? When we click on that, when we, we're gonna create an email, right? And this email is gonna to go to the victim. The email is gonna have a bad link in it. 
when the victim clicks on the link, we don't want them to see payload.exe. It'd look a lot better if they saw a zip file and not the actual executable, right? That's the, looking at the actual executable is a giveaway. So what we're gonna do is zip that payload.exe up into this file. We're gonna zip it up into account update.zip. All right, so what is this command doing? We're using the zip command to zip up this payload.exe into this file called account update.zip, right? We're gonna place this account update in this folder over here. All right, so it's zipped up just so you can see if we ls the folder that we place it in, you can see it right there. All right, now we're going to start up our web service because we want to host this on a website. So we're going to start up the web service using this command. Hey, service, start up Apache 2 for us. So now we have this hosted on a website, right? We could actually see that ourselves if we wanted to. If we just went to our IP address, was it 10.1.16? I can't remember. 10.1.16. 66 and you can see that we have this web page started up um, but if we account well I won't ruin the surprise just yet I won't ruin the surprise just yet I'm getting ahead of myself all right so we got this loaded up we got this started up get our points now we're gonna go back into set toolkit use this new tab to go back into it okay uh hold on let's go back it doesn't look like Something's not right. We failed on the score. What's the score looking for? Let's go CD. Oh man. Did I accidentally close out the wrong tab? Yeah, I did. I don't want to mess with, do not mess with this tab right here. Leave this one alone. We're going to go back over here. I'm going to go to CD bar, www, HTML. I'm going to look at it. It's ACCT. UPD is spelled wrong. So we're going to rename it ACCTUPD.zip. Well, ACCTUPD.zip. So put to rename it, we're going to give it the current file name, which is this guy right here. And we're going to give it the updated file name, which is that guy right there. And it should rename it over for us. Now let's go ahead and score that again. All right, cool. We're good to go. Now we're going to type in set toolkit on this new tab. We're going to go back into one for social engineering attacks. We're going to go to mass mailer, right? That's what we're going to go into one again, hit one again, social engineering attacks. And now we're going to go to mass mailer, right? I'm going to do that over just in case anybody got confused. We're going to type set toolkit, go to one for social engineering attacks and then five for mass mailer, right? Now we're going to start sending this mail to someone. Right, we're going to send an email with our malicious link to someone. Um, we're going to send it to one person, right? So we're going to select one for one person and not to multiple. If we wanted to, we could send it to multiple. Type in structure reality. Type in the victim's email address. It's going to be jamie at structurereality.com. Okay, we're going to set select two to use our own open relay. The I the email is going to come from is going to be our structure realty.com this looks very similar to jamie's domain but we're just missing an i we're spoofing his domain we're pretending to be structure real reality.com but we have our the structure realty without the i to jamie this is going to look like his domain he may miss the i in there and that's what we're hoping for so hit enter all right the from name should be support department. This is what the email is gonna look like it came from, the support department. No, I mean, yes, we want this to be marked as high priority. No attachments, no attachments. We want the um, email subject going to be important. Account update, hit enter. We want this to come in as HTML, please. And now we're going to type in the body, please extract and run the update file from this link. Now this part right here, you want to make sure you're typing this incorrectly, All right? Space href equals HTTP. This is the link to where our malware is going to be. ACCTUPD.zip. And we're going to hide this link inside of the word update so they cannot see it. All 
right, then hit enter. Then we're gonna type the next line. Otherwise your certs will automatically expire. So we're trying to convince him, hey, you need to go ahead and click this link before your certs expire. Hit enter. The next body of line, sincerely break support department. Hit enter. We're gonna hit end in all caps. All right, cool. We can hit enter one more time and that should start sending out the mail. We're gonna hit score. All right, it was sent out to the sent to the recipient of Jamie. So we're gonna hit score and we're gonna go over to the next section. Now we're gonna switch over to a computer where we can open up that mail. We're gonna go to MS10, let's open this up. We're logging in as Jamie, you know his password, you know what to do. Now the application we need is this Thunderbird app right here. I'm gonna double click this. Thunderbird is an email application, right? It is an email application. We can close, <clears throat> we can close that tab out and look at the email. Right, look at the email right here. Important account update. Please download, extract, and run the update file from this link. Here is our our malicious link. All right, let's go ahead and click on that. We click on it. Look what it's doing is downloading our file. It's automatically downloading our file. So give it a second to do its thing. All right, it can't reach it. Oh, it's the wrong, is that the right IP address? We give it the right IP address in the email. No, we didn't, we gave it .55 and it should be .66. So I'm just gonna switch this right here. It should have been dot 66 in the email. I'm going to switch this to dot 66. And when I switch it, it automatically downloads that file for us, right? It should have been dot 66 in the email. I accidentally gave it dot 55. That's fine. I just switched it here for the sake of the lab. Now we're going to open it up. We're going to right click. Well, I don't even have to right click. I'm just going to go into it. Here's our payload, right? This is the download and the zip file account update. Hopefully Jamie doesn't think twice of this and he just double clicks it. All right, so we're just gonna double click it. We're gonna execute this. I accidentally execute, uh, double clicked it twice. Just give it a second. All right, cool, here we go. And run it, right? For, hopefully Jamie doesn't think twice of that and he just runs it just like that. So we're gonna go to the next section. All right, we already did all this. Score that. We're gonna come over here go back to Cali and we're going to exploit that session. Remember this MSF multi-handler session that we had over here. I want you to type in session. You can see that we have an active session that we have one active session. If we want to interact with it, we just type session and then one, uh, sessions dash I one. And now we are, we have access to Jamie's computer. Say, so what is the computer name displayed? We have access to Jamie's computer. If we type sysinfo, we can confirm that. We are we have remote command execution on Jamie's computer. This is us over here. This is Jamie's computer over here. We sent Jamie a bad link. Unfortunately, he clicked on the link and it established and he established a connection with us. We have the connection here. This connection allows us to control Jamie's computer from remote code execution, right? So we're just executing code right now that's running on Jamie's computer, right? The computer name for Jamie's computer is MS10. We're gonna score that. We're gonna, we can do a bunch of other things. We can get the GUID. If you hit the help button, right? Getting his, his user ID, we can see this is Jamie's account. If we hit the help button, you can see other things that we can do on this interpreter session. We can record his mic, we can, um, start using his webcam. We can take a screenshot of his desktop. We can start recording his his keystrokes. There's so many different things that we can do after compromising him. All right, so let's go to the next section. What did we do so far? We sent a malicious email to a victim. It was a phishing email. 
if you're not familiar with social engineering, if you're not f familiar with phishing and the other types of social engineering attacks, I'm highly recommending you to sign up for our next security academy, our next security fundamentals academy program, right? That's going to square your way with all the social engineering attacks, how to use them, how to do them, how to stop them. All right. Now, Jamie, unfortunately, he fell victim to our social engineering attack, which happened to be a phishing email. Well, specifically, it was a spear phishing email. He clicked on it, executed it and established a session with us that gave us remote code execution. Pretty cool. Now, question, what is the primary defense against the attack that you performed in this lab? Well, we want to not execute files from email, right? We do not want to execute files from the email. That would be the best defense. Which security framework does SET use to set up the listener? It's using Metasploit. The most commonly used features of SET are spear phishing, website spoofing. Yes, this is all true, right? SET is known as a social engineering tool. What is the primary limitation or restriction in compromising a victim through a set crafted email and, re and related exploit script payload? Client side security blocking, right? They might have some antivirus or antimatter that's stopping our, our, our program from running. Which of the following are true in regards to set? Set can send attachments or hyperlinks? Yes. Set payloads are allowed. This is the most secure. No. Set demonstrates the power of combining technology with social engineering. Yes. Set can send messages to a single address or large group. Yes. Set emails must be a, from a trusted email. No. Set emails can be can use spoof source addresses. Yes. Um, what do we have wrong? So set can send attachments or hyperlinks. Yes, it can. Set payloads are allowed. This didn't know. Set demonstrates the power of combining technology and social engineering. Set emails can use spoofed. Set emails must be from here. Set can send a message to a single. Oh, I thought I selected that. All right, there we go. And that is it, y'all. If you are enjoying these series, please don't forget to smash the like button. Leave a comment. Let us know how we're doing. Go ahead and drop your questions as well. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Tell a friend to tell a friend to tell a friend. We're here to help the entire community. And the cool thing about YouTube, you can slow this video down as much as you need to. Right? Slow it down. Don't want it done the video. Make sure if you have any questions, you ask them. We're here to help you. We'll see you next time. Peace.